and please help me to welcome our speaker this morning, practitioner Jennifer Livingston, who will be bringing you the warm truth to open your heart, open your mind, and just have you feeling good when you leave here today. Please help me welcome Jennifer Livingston. Thank you, Carol, and good morning, friends. <laughs> Let me also add my own words of welcome to all of you and to those of you tuned into this service on the World Wide Web. I want to say what a privilege it is for me this morning to be sharing with you in the capacity of speaker on this first Practitioner Sunday for 2022 and I want to thank Carol again for setting the stage for the, this morning's service. Friends, looking back on my decision to undertake the course of study to become a licensed practitioner was not a simple one because I had completed the first and second year Science of Mind courses and had intended to be a participant in the third year classes that were being conducted back then by our founding minister, Dr. Elmer Lumsden. But the demands of traveling for work did not allow me this opportunity. I then found myself in a situation where there were now not enough persons who had completed first and second year studies to make a third year class, and so I had to do, as we would say in school, sit out a year. However, when you have made a decision and the choice to pursue a particular course of action, then everything in the universe conspires to bring about your desire. It doesn't matter what obstacles or delay that may seem to get in the way, it is in this certainty as I stand here this morning that I have titled my talk living a life of choice. And so, what exactly do I mean by living a life of choice? Can we live any other way? And are we not making choices every moment of every day? Indeed, we are. And as Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of this teaching called The Science of Mind and Spirit, states in our textbook, and which was the epic epigraph of the inspirational reading, he says, we cannot live a choiceless life. Every day, every moment, every second, there is choice. If it were not so, we would not be individuals. End of that quote. And friends, it is in this, our individuality, that Dr. Holmes reminds us also, we are individuals, and the only way we can be individuals is to be spontaneous, end quote. Of course, along with this spontaneity comes the privilege or right that allows us to make decisions. But there can be no choice unless there is something from which to choose. And in addition, not only must there be the possibility of choosing, but there must also be the ability to experience that which is chosen. In other words, not only do we make choices, but every choice we make results in our experiencing same. What an awesome responsibility then that we have as we go through our day choosing what it is that we will experience but also being wise in making our decisions and choices. The story is told of a crowded airplane about to take off when the silence is shattered by a five-year-old boy who picks that moment to throw a wild temper tantrum. I'm sure many of you can relate. No matter what the frustrated, embarrassed mother did to try to calm him down, the boy continues to scream furiously 
and kick the seats around him. Suddenly, from the rear of the plane, an elderly gentleman in the uniform of an Air Force general comes forward and stops the flustered mother with an upraised hand. He then leans down, motions towards his chest, and whispers something to the little boy's ear. Instantly, the boy calms down, gently takes his mother's hand, and quietly fastens his seatbelt. All the other passengers burst into spontaneous applause. As the general returns to his seat, a flight attendant touches his arm and says, excuse me, general, but could I ask you what magic words you used on that little boy? The old man smiles serenely and gently confides. I showed him my pilot's wings, service stars, and battle ribbons, and explained that they entitled me to throw one passenger out the plane door on any flight I choose. That's exercising a personal choice, for which the Dictionary of New Thought Terms gives the following definition. Personal choice is divine freedom. Without choice, there would be no spontaneous volition, and without the possibility of more than one experience to choose, there would be no choice. For many of us, we often take this task lightly, especially in our routine activities, but even in our most mundane task, we need to remind ourselves that we are choosing to honor the Christ's presence within. Thus, we can choose to redirect our path using our inner power to create a greater experience. From the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Holmes also states, man has the ability to choose what he will do with his life and is unified with the law which automatically produces his choices, end quote. Friends, we are always utilizing this law. It is the law of cause and effect for some purpose and most times we are doing it unconsciously. When Jesus, the master teacher, said that we should believe even before we receive, he was explaining the operation of this mental law of cause and effect. If nothing is believed in, then nothing is acted upon by it. But since we are always believing something, the law will always be operating upon what we believe in the way we believe it. Consequently, we must learn to bring our thoughts in line with the original harmony, the divine presence, knowing that the necessity of choosing is determined by the very nature of our being, and we cannot avoid it. So let us say this affirmation together. I will read it once, and you can say it after me. I'll break it down. It says, I honor the Christ's presence within me by being fully present to the choices I make each moment. And so I'll repeat it in parts. I honor the Christ presence within me, together, presence within me, by being fully present, being present to the choices I make each moment. And my friends, that is the truth. We need to be fully present because being present to our choices in the now is being underscored by an article by Dr. Carol Carnes from her Living Consciously articles. Um, and she pointed to this fact that we only have now moments. And she says that spending time thinking about our previous choices or spending too much time thinking about the outcomes in the future of choices we are about to make robs us of our now moments. Dr. Carnes gave us a vivid reminder in that article, and she states, and I quote, 
Now is what the clock is reporting, no matter what time it may be. So we're always making choices in the now. Friends, even in our spiritual activities, such as our meditation, our spiritual mind healing treatment, or our affirmative prayers, even reading inspirational literature, these are all choices that we make as to how we move forward on this spiritual path. We can choose to be diligent with our practice and the study of truth, being fully confident that the law will bring about the desired result in our experience. Or we can choose not to do the spiritual work and live with the consequences of whatever comes our way. However, my friends, this act of choosing, therefore, is very important. As we are reminded in the book of Joshua, when he was addressing the tribes of Israel in chapter 24, verse 15, the King James Version states, and if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. And the New International Version, it states, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. End of that scripture. So if we have to make a choice and we feel we don't know what to do, we need to become still, quiet our minds, and know that the Father within knows what to do and how to do it. This guidance works for us no matter where we are in the world or what religion we practice. Dr. Raymond Charles Barker, in his book, The Power of Decisions, states the following. Decision is the most important function of the individual mind. No creative process can begin until a decision is made. Dr. Barker goes on to state, to say you do not know what to do or you do not know what you want is to negate the infinite intelligence which is individualized in you. No one else on earth is better equipped to determine your good than you are. The universe has no favorites and God knows no special person." End quote. So, as self-choosing individuals, we live and move and have our being in that one mind, the mind of God, which is the creative mind of the universe. It flows through man, and it can only return to us what we think into it. No matter what we do, law will always manifest our desires. So if we're thinking of ourselves, as lacking in any way, or as being poor and needy, then mind has no choice but to return to us what we have thought into it. Thoughts are things, and they have the power to express themselves in our experience. Therefore, we must choose well. And as this article by Ralph Marston states, in one of the Daily Motivator series that is sent to me by my husband, Carl, every morning, I would like to share this article with you. It says, Choose Well, by Ralph Marston. What are you choosing right now? What will it add to or take away from your life? The circumstances of your world do not just appear out of thin air. Many of them come from intentional or habitual choices, and a larger portion of those choices are yours. Some choices provide quick, trivial, pleasurable benefits at the expense of significant costs that comes later. The problem with those choices is that later does eventually come. Other choices impose burdens on you initially. Yet, as you continue to willingly shoulder the burdens, these choices result in greater enduring value. Any given moment offers countless options, with each one leading to even more options. 
Your ability to choose among these options provides immense opportunity. Take that opportunity seriously, thoughtfully, and choose well. The quality of your life depends on your choices. End of that article. So my friends, let us challenge ourselves. As Reverend John always says, he gives you an assignment. Well, my assignment for you this week. If we say we are choosing to be more loving, then let us practice being loving. So if we go out tomorrow morning or later today, and for some reason we experience a bad experience in the traffic, perhaps maybe one of our famous drivers or taxi drivers, bad drives us, then if we're choosing love, we cannot be berating the drivers. We need to send them some love and send them on their way. And if we are choosing to be peaceful, for example, then we cannot get upset and angry because the young man at the stoplight cleaned the windscreen despite our telling him not to. We are choosing to be peaceful. And my friends, importantly, if you're on our spiritual prosperity adventure, or if you're just choosing abundance and to be more prosperous as you walk into a store and you see something, we don't want you to immediately have as your first thought, I cannot afford it. That negates your power of choice in the moment. So, my friends, when we are living a life of choice, here are three things we must remember. Our power is in the moment. We have to make the decision. Secondly, we must be consistently watching our thoughts and our words. Since thirdly, the creative process will always outpicture our dominant thought patterns and oftentimes even without us making a decision. Friends, one of the most important things for us to remember is that we are always causing something to be created for us. So if today you have a choice to make, maybe a change in careers, a change in a relationship, or a change of residence, or perhaps you want to pursue a new business opportunity, remember, life responds to us in the way that we approach it. So in every choice, at every moment, it must be a God-centered choice. Let us then, during this week and going forward in this new year, choose to be identified with power, with love, with beauty, with peace, and with joy in the knowing that we are always living a life of choice. Namaste.